Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. What I got here today, uh, we've been waiting a long time for this. This is a Starlink business system, um, also known as a Starlink Premium. Later on they changed it to the Starlink business system. Um, the antenna appears to be almost close to twice the size of the Starlink Gen 2, the one that is... We have one of those, uh, it's the Starlink RV system. Um, so, I actually don't have the Starlink uh, RV one with me today, otherwise I'd be comparing it. But I do have a Gen 1 round dishy antenna that is operational up on the roof of my house. And, uh, yeah, I've had that one for about two years now. I was a beta tester back in the early days. So I'm going to compare that antenna, the Gen 1, to this business system today. Um, shortly, I'm going to be just putting this outside in my backyard, and we're going to be firing it up, and we're going to be seeing what kind of results we get. Now, what I've discovered with the business system versus, say, the RV or the other versions of Starlink it's, this is radically different. This antenna not only is larger, it comes with a much heavier gauge uh, cable. The connectors are obviously different on it, so they don't want you to accidentally or deliberately try to reconnect it. With uh, the other uh, Starlink uh, system power equipment, because this antenna comes with a separate power supply, which is right there, and this guy right here is a 320 watt power supply compared to when it's being powered off of the Starlink routers like one of these guys. Now, this antenna does come with the standard Starlink router, but this router, the PoE on it's only 100 watts, so it's only good with uh, the other, the RV antennas or the other versions. When you're using one of these guys, you must be using the new power supply um, by design. Now, this antenna also claims to be able to melt ice and snow twice as fast um, as the other antennas. So obviously, there's where it needs a lot more power because of the heater in it. But I've also heard, now don't quote me on this, but this antenna can also track multiple satellites and use them at the same time. Um, that's where things get really interesting because more satellites at the same time means a lot more bandwidth. You know, at the current time, there's over 3,000 satellites in orbit. Um, they're constantly, like every week, you see a Starlink launch. Um, the ultimate goal is something like 40,000 satellites. I mean, when that day comes, uh, it's just going to be unbelievable how much bandwidth you'll be able to get through one of these systems. Um, I've heard up to 10 gigabits. Uh, that is insane uh, to even think about, but it's all possible. It's just a matter of more satellites. Things just keep getting better and better. Technology just doesn't sit still. But So basically, uh, from your main antenna, you would connect using the cable provided here to the power supply from the power supply, where is it? It's this cable here to the router. Now the router has the standard, same connectors on it. So I've got a Starlink uh, ethernet adapter here, which will connect on that cable in between and allow me to get an ethernet connection out of it right there. However, and there doesn't seem to be much instructions uh, this cable here came with the Starlink business. Now, this is really interesting because it is an Ethernet connector, and the connector on this end uh, would plug into the other. They would put a power supply. So, basically, what this is suggesting is I can go from antenna with that cable to the 320 watt power supply, and then out and have Ethernet basically straight into my business system. Um, obviously, if I'm a hotel or something, I'm already going to have uh, some type of Ethernet <clears throat> system built in to my hotel. And uh, that's where it goes. We'll go right into my own router. So I'm going to actually, in another video, figure out how that works. Um, is there a DHCP already set somehow in the antenna to serve an automatic connection, or do I have to set it statically? 
Um, with the other uh, Starlink antennas, I did find that they were using 192.168.100.1 uh, set statically. You actually didn't need to use their, their router. Um, their routers, too, are just w, uh, open WRT, but they've locked it down. So, okay, guys, we'll get back soon, and uh, we'll be outside, outside there. Uh, got a lot of snow the other day, so I'm going to have to go out there and clean the snow a little bit. And then we can get out there and uh, start testing her out this weekend. Okay, guys, take care. There she is, all set up the Starlink business and I've got the router and the power supply set up there now just so you know I'm gonna bring you over here and I'm gonna show you way up there you can see my Starlink uh, that's a gen 1 round dishy it's been up there for about two years I've mounted up high so it has a good view of the sky it's been working really well but today we're going to compare it to the Starlink business system. I'm going to come over here and we're going to now, we're going to power it up. I got a lot of snow the last couple of days. So there we go. It's plugged in. Things are going to start to power up here. So I got out in the middle of my yard so it has the best view of the sky. And uh, I can see that power supply has a white light on it that is a 320 watt power supply and we have a much thicker cable on the Starlink business running over to the antenna obviously this thing is consuming uh, quite a bit of power compared to the, uh, the other systems what I've done is I put the Starlink Ethernet adapter in between uh, those connectors are the same and I believe this router the Starlink router is exactly the same as what we're seeing with the, the Generation 2 antennas. Um, the Ethernet cable, I have outside here a network port. Actually, I should close that up. I'll just give you guys a quick look inside my network port. I have coax and network available outside for being able to uh, do these kind of tests. And, uh, oh, there she goes. Look at that. Starlink has gone into the bird bath position, so it's looking up at the sky, scanning the sky, getting ready to optimize. It will probably tilt a little bit north. That's typically what they do in this region of the world. So I'm going to head inside now, and we're going to take a look at the performance, and we're going to compare this business system, the premium business system, to uh, the standard residential system, which is what the, the Gen 1 Dishy is up on my house. Okay, guys, we'll see you in a bit. Hey, guys, I'm down here in my data center. And a lot of people always comment. They think oh, I must mine a lot of Bitcoin, but that's not the case. But what I got here, right on the top here, this is a, a gateway that aggregates multiple uh, connections together. And it does that by... Uh, Basically, we have there's another part to it that's in the cloud, in the Azure cloud, called the concentrator. And uh, every connection that is connected to this device, it's a separate tunnel back to the concentrator through each connection. And uh, your connection into this device on the LAN, or your packets are basically routed across all of the connections, which uh, increases the speed and resilience and reliability of your connection. But what I'm going to use it for today is I've connected on the back here the yellow cable is the Starlink residential and the white cable is the Starlink business and I'm just using its Wi-Fi radio to connect to my laptop and uh, we're going to run some tests. It has very good uh, analytical software for gauging and reporting what each of the connections are doing and the bandwidth and the latency. Um, I did a few tests already and the results was interesting. Um, it seems the business system is better. Uh, now, this gateway likes connections with lower latency and um, 
better timing. So that could be it too. That's what the business system is possibly demonstrating. So I'll just give you a little quick view of the back of my rack here. Do a lot of broadcast stuff. <laughs> And uh, yeah, there she is, the gateway. I actually have another one up here that I use uh, for my entire house. And it also bonds together six um, cellular modems. And uh, yes, I am a flight aware guy and also a flight radar 24 guy. <laughs> I have actually had that for 10 years, believe it or not. This is one of the uh, very original radios that Flight, uh, Flight Radar 24 came out with. And that blue guy up there is probably one of the very first uh, Flight Aware radios. And I still have it and it's still running to this day. You can see the lights on the side of it go on the ADSB. Okay guys, we're gonna go upstairs and do some more uh, Starlink testing and see what uh, what Starlink business is all about Talk to you later and the outdoor conditions of the test at this time is minus 11 degrees and some light snow coming down and There is uh, the dishy sitting there on the table the business system And uh, yeah, it's a cold day today, okay? Just an update, here is the gateway appliance that I am using to aggregate uh, the two Starlink connections. This is currently active. If we go around the back here, you can see the two connections. The yellow is the residential system, the white on the right is the business system, and the white cable coming out is the LAN connection, and I am running this test right now on this HP server and there you have it guys okay so there's the first test of the blended and aggregated connection of two Starlinks um, the Ethernet on the left is the Starlink business and uh, interesting, it does have a higher upload speed. Uh, the one on the left is five upload speed. Downloads don't look too great, but when it did the aggregated test, it actually had 232 and 34 up total. Quite interesting to see that. So my conclusion, wrapping things up here, the Starlink business, the only thing different is the Starlink business is sitting in my backyard on a table but it does have a very clean view of the sky where it's pointed north. Uh, the residential system is on the roof, so it does have a better view of the sky. But uh, overall, I'm actually kind of disappointed. I thought the Starlink business would perform much better than this. Um, it is five times the cost of the residential system. I mean, it's 500 a month compared to 100 a month. It's also $2,500 for this equipment versus $500 for uh, the residential system and the RV systems. Um, what we're going to do next, and this, you know, stay tuned. This will probably be in the next couple of months. We are going to get uh, probably five RV systems, and we are going to aggregate them all together with one of our M16 gateways. What aggregation is, is we're actually bonding and blending the connections and uh, making it into a super connection. It will be interesting to see how uh, the results of five Starlinks bonded and blended together would be. So stay tuned, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Well, there's actually four of them. <laughs> Look at this. I, they just keep uh, appearing, more and more of them, but four Four babies, uh, that's a pretty big litter. She did a good job. Good job, Mom. You raised four babies. Look at that. Oh, those guys are fighting. <laughs>